this is I Do Damage, and welcome back to the channel. In this Torchlight 3 video, I'm going to talk about the new patch that came out on June 30th. It introduced Act 3 and many other big ticket changes, and that's what I want to talk about in this video is do an overview patch breakdown video. Just as a friendly reminder, I do stream on Twitch, mainly on the weekends, on Friday and Saturday, but sometimes I'll occasionally do some bonus streams during the week as well, just for you. The link will be down in the description there. Make sure you drop a follow, and hopefully I'll be lucky enough to catch you there sometime. Now let's talk Torchlight 3. The first big ticket item of this new update is Act 3, which introduces the Dwarven Frontier and adds on a bit more of the story. This will be the final act before the game launches later this year. And if you want more details on Act 3, I do have a card up top kind of going a little bit more in depth with that. For this video, I want to talk about the things that I've noticed so far and just talk about some of the things that I'm excited about. So the biggest thing that I noticed when I first booted up the new update was it, the game seemed more zoomed out and the UI seemed more zoomed out as well, which is fine. And in, in fact, it actually made the game feel a bit more sleek and it was just a little bit easier on the eyes, I think. At first when I saw this change, I was not super happy with it just because it was just new to my eyes. But the more that I played and kind of just it grew on me, I guess. And I actually kind of like the change now. However, I wish that they would add an option in for UI scaling, just so that, you know, if your eyes aren't as great, maybe you can zoom the UI in more and just kind of give us like a like a uh, like a scroll bar there so that we can zoom in and out with the UI. Now I know that was not one of the highlights of the patch, but that was just the first thing I noticed right out of the gate. Another big addition in this patch was the addition of contracts and fame. We finally got a look and see what's on the reward tracks for these. So the way that contracts works is when you kill bosses, you do quests, you kill elite monsters, you get fame, which in turn levels up your contract. There are three different contracts that you can level up. There's the adventures contract, craftsman's contract and the homesteader's contract after looking into them it seemed like the adventures contract is going to be your best source of map works which we'll talk a little bit later on it's kind of the end game placeholder currently and then your craftsman and homesteaders offer other unique rewards i believe some of the contracts do have exclusive rewards tied to them such as pets and things like that fort props and also once you've maxed out a contract it then goes into a repeatable track that you can keep doing. I think there's 10 different levels that you can just keep leveling up over and over through. The max level of the, each contract is level 40 before it goes into the repeatable section. And also contracts are account wide. They're not character based. So you keep leveling them up across all your characters. So I think it's a pretty cool little feature and I'm definitely glad they added it back to the game. Next up on our list is lifebound items, and I do have a video talking about the old system compared to the new system that goes into a little bit more depth, and that'll be up top in case you want to check that out as well. Lifebound has seen a big overhaul. They now do not drop in the game. Lifebound items do not drop, and if you don't know what a lifebound item is, it's a item that when you die, so does the item, and you can't get it back. So basically, what happens now is they do not drop at all, and starting around, I think it's level seven, you can start to find these scrolls of binding. And what it does is if you use this scroll on an item, it then binds it to you, makes it life bound, but increases the stats and makes it more powerful. So it's kind of a risk reward type of system. When I first heard about the system, I thought the scrolls would be somewhat rare and something that I would just hoard up for max level. As it turns out, scrolls are actually insanely common. The drop chance on normal mobs is between 1-4% to drop chance. However, from boss chests, champions, and bosses, you have a 1-6 in six chance to get a scroll. And, you know, I've leveled up to like level 14, I think, since the patch hits. Because I started all new characters, because I wanted to test it again from the beginning, because that's just what I enjoy in the game. And I think I've got like almost 20 of these <laughs> scrolls, so they are really common. And then the other big change with Lightbound items comes to the Phase Beast dungeons, because before these Phase Beast dungeons would drop Lifebound gear. But instead of them dropping the gear, they now guarantee you at least one scroll of binding. And if you don't know what Phase Beast dungeons are, basically they're these random purple beast-like things that you can kill. And they try to run away. They're kind of like treasure goblins, right? But if you do manage to kill one before it escapes, it opens up a portal to a boss fight. 
that if you die on the boss fight, you're dead for good. So it's a roguelike kind of dungeon and it's rewarding. Another big part of this update was the relic updates and changes and the relic buffs. I've had the opportunity now to try out two of them since the patch. Within my time spent on the new patch, I have been able to play with Flaming Destroyer as well as Blood Drinker. And let me just tell you, oh, wow. Make sure you check out all the new relics. I'll try to uh, have some going in the background for you right now. But these two I've, I've played with the most so far. And the Blood Drinker is really cool. You get like these buzzsaw blades that rotate around you and just decimate stuff. And then for the Flaming Destroyer, instead of just one sword dropping down when you activate it, there's now five that drop down from the sky. And they've also seen buffs across the board as well. They're just a lot stronger now and in a much better place. But keep in mind that this round of Relic Updates is part one. There's still more to come and it's still considered a work in progress. So hopefully with the next big update, we'll see even more adjustments to the relic items. One of the other really big things that I was excited for, and, and this was something that <laughs> I was really looking forward to with Patch, was the melee changes. And I was just wondered, how were they gonna buff melee? Just make them take less damage or what? But they actually got creative with it and added in some more melee mechanics that are super fun, which is when you hit an enemy with a melee attack, it staggers them. It doesn't like knock them back, but it kind of it staggers them in a way that feels rewarding so that you don't die as quickly, basically. And also when you use a potion, it does knock back all the enemies around you as well. So you have a kind of escape and a way to get out in case you're in trouble. Maybe you're standing and blazing and your body blocked. Hitting that potion, getting that space open and getting out feels really good now. But with that comes an interesting thing where... Before this patch, it felt like movement skills were mandatory for all the classes. I played through Ridiculous on all classes except for Forged because while well, I was torturing myself with the Forged and just forcing myself to play melee so I could be more appreciative of this change in the patch. And I'm glad I did because it is definitely a nice change to see. Ranged is still stronger on the Forged, in my opinion, but that is a whole other topic that we will not get into in this video. Another really minor change that came along with the melee changes was that you can get through mobs easier now. The mobs are like less, I don't know, they're like less sticky or like they're less clunky feeling in a way. It's kind of hard to explain exactly how it is, but it just feels nicer now. So take my word for it. And if you haven't yet, I really encourage you to, to check out the new patch. There's been a lot of changes, and if the game feels a lot better now. But there was loads of other changes in the patch that I just... I mean, if I were to actually talk about the entire patch and all the changes, this video would be insanely long. <laughs> and so I will spare you the time. I'll have the links down to the patch notes down in the comments. There's two parts to the patch notes. That's how many things changed. A few more things that kind of stuck out to me with the patch was now we have a buyback tab from vendors, which I didn't even know that I needed. And just loads of other changes, balance changes, class changes, skill changes, <laughs> so many changes. And so far, I mean, this is the first day of the patch. Feels great. So some uh, some final closing thoughts on if I think the game's worth it now. I definitely think it is for a few reasons. First of all, the game's 30 bucks, So that price is going to go up when the game is actually launched. And now you have the whole story in with the Act 1 through 3. I think there's still a bit more story to come with the uh, end game system that we'll see hopefully. But as it is right now, you have all three acts to play through and check out. You have four classes. It takes about 15 to 20 hours on Ridiculous per class if you do for one playthrough act one through three so with that in mind you could get 80 hours if you play all four classes all the way through the game plus there's loads of legendaries to find forts to build loot to find there's so much there that i think now would be an okay time to jump in one other note and then we'll go ahead and wrap this up is end game and this was something that i was a little bit kind of i know the end game system is not coming yet and i'm not allowed to talk about it yet but with the contracts coming back, you can now find map work scrolls on the reward track. So now you no longer need to phase beast grind or whatever people <laughs> were doing to, to level up past the story content before this patch. So I think that adds even more value to the game, being able to have these randomized maps that you can, you can farm and grind and continue to level up with, while also working towards contracts to get more map works to keep grinding. So you kind of have a mini end game loop right now. It's definitely a placeholder and is nothing compared to what's to come. With that in mind, that was all the big ticket 
items that I want to talk about with the patch. There's loads more, and like I said, make sure you check out the patch notes if you want all of them. I mean, you're going to want to set aside some time to read through this novel. It's, it's insane. There's so many changes, and I could keep going on, but I'll spare you the time. I can't thank you guys enough for watching this video. If you do enjoy the content and everything on the channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, so that you can get notified when I post new videos throughout the week, not only for Torchlight 3, but other ARPGs, MMORPGs, and everything in between just for you. Also, feel free to leave a comment and say what's up. And please feel free to check out all the social media links down below. Let's have a chat. It's been real, guys. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.